Well, well, well. We've made it. Week 10. November is in full swing. And well, you know, we're getting on close to the Thanksgiving, getting on close to big rivalries and stuff like that. We already got a big one for you Friday night. Um, first off, there is the Miami Hurricanes taking on NC State. But I mean, who cares about that game? We're talking the number nine team in the country, the BYU Cougars. Zach Wilson, the Heisman candidate, going up against the number 21 ranked Boise State Broncos. Boise State started their season a couple weeks ago, as we know. It's going to be a big game on Friday night, um, 9.45 on, you know, the East Coast, 8.45 over here, Central Time. So, there's that. And then we get started on Saturday, which is crazy, right? Guess who's back, too, you know, on Tuesday night, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, you got the Mac back in action, you know, Friday and Saturday night. You know, you got Pac-12 action. We'll talk about the Pac-12 in a minute because there's a lot going on in the Pac-12. A lot going on. Um, first off, to start off on Saturday, we got a ranked Liberty team taking on Virginia Tech. What? What is the sorcery? Very, very surprising to see this team even ranked Honestly, still surprised to see them in the FBS in the first place. But the Liberty Flames are indeed ranked. They did beat an ACC team this year in Syracuse. But that's Syracuse. So that's nothing to be writing home about. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the number 18 team in the country, the SWU Mustangs, go up to Philadelphia to take on Temple. Should be interesting. You'll see, you know... SMU has kind of lost their way ever since getting pretty much pounded, you know, by Cincinnati a couple weeks back. Um, I'm expecting a good game up there. Um, but keep your eyes on the three following games. Of course, you got Arizona State taking on USC. Herm Edwards and, and his Arizona State Sun Devils are heading up to the Coliseum. At 9 in the morning, Pacific time. That's right. Pac-12 after breakfast, baby. It's all for big noon kickoff, let me tell you. Uh, so it's going to be very fun. First time seeing Pac-12 all season long. And, I mean, it's just going to be one hell of a game. Let me tell you. It's going to be one hell of a game. As there's uh, something in the background here. Not sure what, what's going on. Hold on. Okay, I think I, I think I got to stop. I'm not editing this out just because. Shut up. Everybody shut up. There's 80 subscribers now. Uh, don't think just because, you know, started, you know, doing a little bit. Of it. That's neither here nor there. Arizona State, USC. Pretty interesting matchup. Should be fun. Michigan is pretty much already out of the college football playoff race by losing to Michigan State last week. But, you know, Indiana's still undefeated, you know. Still undefeated Indiana. Very interesting team there. And, I mean, the, the, that team's a lot of fun to watch. You know, they there was a bizarre play last week, as we know, you know, with them and Rutgers. And, I mean, Michigan's just going to have to improve. They're going to have to do something. they gotta, they got to be able to score points. they got to be able to stop, you know, Michael Penix in the backfield and stuff like that. they just got to stop Indiana in general, you know. So that's going to be interesting. Of course, my Texas Longhorns are back in the rankings. Don't know why West Virginia is not in the rankings. But nonetheless, the Longhorns are in the rankings once again at number 22 in the country. And, um, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how we do because West Virginia looked very, very good last week. They looked very good. Uh, but 
we'll, we'll see how it goes. Texas' defense has just been, you know, not the greatest. Offense has looked a little anemic at times, despite being the number one scoring offense in the Big 12, one of the top scoring offenses in the country. A little anemic, you know. But, hey, we can do this. We can do this. We got this. What about Marshall? They moved on up a little bit in the rankings, too. They're taking on UMass, you know. Good for good for Marshall, a non-conference game in November. Very nice, very nice. Oh, boy. Talk about 2.30 real quick. Let's go. Let's go. Let's talk about it. Well, you know, Oklahoma State, Kansas State may not be the biggest game of the day anymore. We're rather one of the biggest games of the day anymore, but it's okay. Um, still should be very interesting. Oklahoma State, you know, has a very, very small chance. I'm still holding out a little bit of hope because they have one loss. Uh, I'm not going to just eliminate them just yet, but they have a very, very slim, slim chance at getting a win against Kansas State. Should, you know, maybe help a little bit. Don't know if Purdue, Wisconsin is going to get played. Um, Wisconsin has been ravaged by COVID-19, of course, and I don't, I don't know how that's going to go. Cincinnati, number six in the country now. Congratulations, guys. You're, you're doing great. You got a big test against Houston. Go out there, you know, play some defense, get rid of, you know, give it to the backs. Hell, he can keep it himself. And he can run all over the, them damn Cougars. Oh, uh, man. Poor Kansas. I, I hate to be Kansas because they got destroyed last week. They're probably going to get destroyed this week by Oklahoma. Just saying. I'm just saying. But the big game, the big game for 230 is really a top 10 matchup. Florida, Georgia, both teams with one loss, both teams looking to prove something. It's been, you know, an interesting story for Georgia as of late. Their offense has not looked very good. Defense has still, you know, looked great, um, aside from Alabama, of course. But, you know, defense still looking good. Florida has been ravaged by COVID-19 as well, and the bad defense, but, you know, Kyle Trask is a guy we, who we thought was going to, you know, win the Heisman and stuff like that. You know, he was going to be, you know, one of the guys that was going to be a front runner for the Heisman. You know, we thought the Big Ten was canceled and stuff like that. We thought the Pac-12 was done. Um, yeah, but I mean, come on. So, Florida and Georgia, big game in Jacksonville, of course, gonna be fun. Meanwhile, 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 we got Rutgers, Ohio State. Um, should not be any problem for Ohio State at all. I mean, come on. It's Ohio State. It's Rutgers. Ohio State's probably going to destroy Rutgers. Let's just be real. Ohio State's taking on Baylor. You know, should be interesting for a little bit. But a Baylor is not the team they were last year, obviously. And Iowa State's, you know, looking a lot better than they have been, you know. And Texas A&M's taking on South Carolina, of course. So, you know, nothing to see there. South Carolina's not very good. Coastal Carolina taking on South Alabama. South Alabama, I think I watched a game with them this year. Um, they're... They're, they're something. They're, they're there, but Coastal, you know, they could keep, you know, keep on winning, keep on keeping the win streak up as they're number 15 in the nation as I'm looking over here on the right, on the left side of my screen right now at, you know, what's on tap for this week. Um, the uh, Coastal Carolina, you know, Coastal fans, you're, you guys are feeling pretty good about yourself. You're number 15 in the country. So, what about it? What about these two big games? Pac-12 is back. You know, there's some Pac-12 after dark involving those two Washington schools, of course. Those are going to be fun. Stanford, Oregon, let's talk about that first before we talk about the real big game of the night. Um, Tyler Stouts. I believe that, or however you say his name. Tyler Slow, Tyler Stouts. I don't know how you say his name because his name was pretty difficult. <laughs> I was like, who is this guy? Because um, there's no Justin Herbert anymore. Not not down there in Eugene, not down there. And Stanford, you know, had a bad year last year. They only went four and eight. How will that Stanford offense pick it up back up? 
They got to do something against the number 12 team in the country. They got to do something. And they don't do nothing. I don't think it's going to – I don't think I'm going to have this game on very long. I'm just saying. Like, you know, the Pac-12 started so late, you know. It's so late in the game to be starting a season. So it's, it's very hard. It's, it's a lot harder for, you know, the Pac-12 to be like, oh, well, you know. We got stars, you know, we got stars because we don't really know anything about the Pac-12. You know, we think Oregon's going to be a front runner for the Pac-12 anyway, but Pac-12 is only playing six games. So, and um, we don't even, and I mean, I don't even know what in the world's going on with Stanford. I mean, you know, the Pac-12, you know, the Pac-12 just had a lot of problems this year, even more so than the Big Ten has had trying to come back, I think. So, I don't, I don't know how this game's going to go. I I just want to see Pac-12 football. I want to see how this goes, and I want to see Stanford's, you know, run oriented offense, you know, that pro style stuff. But DJ Uli Lagalele, the number one Clemson Tigers. No Trevor Lawrence. You got, you still got ETN. You still got Amari Rogers. You still got a defense that's looking pretty good, although a little shaky at times. Take it on to number four, Notre Dame Fighting Irish at six thirty. 7.30 on the East Coast, of course. One hell of a game it's going to be. I wonder, can Notre Dame, do they have a chance? Can, you know, Notre Dame, can they, you know, go up and down the field against Clemson? Can they keep up with Clemson? Because Clemson can score. They can score at will on you. If they they have, they have we like a Lele at quarterback. They don't have Trevor Lawrence. You know, but it, that guy's no slouch. The young quarterback is no slouch, let me tell you that. How will the Notre Dame defense fare against Clemson? That's really a big, big question because Clemson can score a lot of points. You know, just because Boston College kind of limited them a little bit does not mean that, you know, Clemson can't score because they scored 20-something points in the second half. It didn't allow Boston College to score anything. So, you know. That Clemson offense and defense is scary. Dabble's got them ready for a big heavyweight flight. So it's all coming down to Brian Kelly and Ian Book. What are they going to do to keep Clemson off balance? What are they going to do to keep Clemson on their toes? They have to score. They have to score. It, you know, scoring against Pitt and Georgia Tech is not going to prove it. You gotta prove it against big time teams. If you wanna, if you wanna be one of the best teams in the country, you have to prove it now against Clemson. You have to prove it now. If you don't prove it against Clemson, you're out of the playoffs, buddy. Like Notre Dame with a loss, they're done. I'm just saying it right now. Clemson's still in it because they're Clemson. I mean, that's just the way it is. But Notre Dame probably done if they lose. They haven't looked like a top four team all season, and yeah, they are the top four. Yeah, they are in the top four right now. And for some reason, some people say that George is a top four team, which is also not the case, because there really isn't a number four team right now. But Notre Dame is the team that looks closest to the number four in the country, and they have to prove themselves. They have to. You know, a lot of these games the Notre Dame has played have looked ugly and. You know, the last couple weeks they've looked pretty good, but they got to do something against Clemson. So, week 10, let's get ready. Pac-12 is back. Maction is back on the weekdays. Let's do this, guys. Let's do it. Sorry about the error, um, the error earlier. I'm not editing it out. That I'm not editing that out, though. So, we'll see you tomorrow for more college football and more NFL maybe it's college basketball on the horizon we're on we're on the home stretch talking about college basketball so we'll see you know what in the world's going on with college basketball going on with college football and everything like that and the NFL see you there